Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio. I'm your host, Deborah Bailey. And when I started this show in 2008, I was on a mission to promote women-owned businesses and help women succeed by providing resources and valuable tips from other women and men, small business owners. In each interview, my guests speak openly about their triumphs, the scary times, and tough decisions they had to make along the way. Women Entrepreneurs Radio is about showing women how to harness their natural strengths to achieve success on their own terms. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. And I'm really glad that you could join us today. And if you're listening to this on a podcast directory, um, you can also find the show on iTunes. Uh, of course, it's also on Podomatic. Mm-hmm. Links uh, for the show from um, the blog, WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com. You can find links there for um, different ways you can subscribe. If you have uh, Android, you can also subscribe to the show on iTunes. So you can listen wherever and whenever. And also, uh, we are going to be moving the archive off of Blog Talk Radio, so if you go to that link, uh, you really aren't going to see any shows right now. It's uh, slowly going to be added to um, Livesyn. Uh, there's a link also on the blog for that right now. There's only a few shows up at the moment. Uh, I can only add a few at a time. So in time, uh, the more featured and popular shows will be added to that archive uh, from the past years. So that will be another place for you to listen to the entrepreneurs who have been on already. Um, probably from um, 2015, 2015 rather, um, back to like uh, 2008. So that'll be there as well. So I hope you take advantage of that. And also we are now on Patreon um, under Women Entrepreneurs Radio. So you can become a supporter and join the community for as little as a dollar a month. So I hope that you will check that out as well. So you can um, be part of the community and help us to continue to grow and to support um, the promotions for women entrepreneurs. So I'm going to introduce my guest, Kim Harris, who's a returning guest. And um, her topic is going to be 4321, How to Win with Money and Master the Game. And melding her skills, knowledge, and talents with more than 20 years' experience in the financial sector, Kim Harris has become known as the legacy creation strategist. As an SBA Women in Business Champion, Kim helps individuals navigate through the challenges of life and business growth by providing guidance and training in solidifying their vision for purpose and establishing their life's legacy. She's responsible for raising more than $5 million in corporate sponsorships and grants from entities such as J.P. Morgan Chase, Verizon Wireless, City, Office Max, American Airlines, and many more. Her signature wealth creation strategy, My Personal Banking System, helps individuals and business owners utilize fully protected IRS regulations to develop a a personal banking system which allows her clients an opportunity to escalate cash reserves for self-financing and secure a financial future. Her goal is to empower more people to be in control of their money and create the life, business, and legacy they deserve. So welcome back, Kim. I am so honored. It is a new year. It's time to get serious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, particularly when it, when it comes to money, I think we should always uh, be much more serious uh, about what we're doing with it and how we are investing um, in it. So, you know, I think that we really should just just really dive right into the topic. So, you know. Right yes. Now, what 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 are your you know what are your feelings around um you know what people should be doing now? Let's just get right into it. Well, okay, so the climate, political and social climate has changed. And with these changes are gonna come some impending impact financially for everyone. Uh let's start with the uh repeal of the Affordable Care Act and how that's going to impact uh families across the U.S. in terms of health care costs. Um, and whether you're pro or, you know, con, it doesn't matter. The impact is going to significantly 
uh, be felt across all economic and social economic platforms. So um, this is something that um, definitely uh, you should be paying very close attention to in terms of the changes that are going to be made and how it's going to affect and trickle down eventually into your bottom line, your household income. And uh, you want to also, you know, be aware that your money um, is your army. <laughs> I always say, you know, your money is your army. You're working for your money first, but you want to make sure that you deploy your money to work for you. And uh, there are different strategies I'm going to be talking about today that you can um, do this effectively and in a way that's protected by the IRS. Um, and when I say that, I'm talking about tax-free growth, tax-free accessibility, and tax-free disbursement. Um, and so these are, these are regulations that are there for the protection of everyone. However, the wealthy seems, seem to use it more than the rest of us. Uh, and it's not because I think that, you know, um, they're, they're more savvy or anything. It's, it's just accessibility of the information and having the information made available, which is why I'm so passionate about sharing it, being in the financial sector and working in, um, you know, uh, one of the top accounting firms across the U.S. or in the world at the time uh, helped me to learn about some of these strategies that were implemented by the wealthy to protect their money. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking, hmm, how come the rest of us don't have have this uh, available? To, well, because they, we, we're not, a lot of the, the majority are not in a position to pay five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 for somebody to sh shelter their money mm -hmm. per hour, okay? So it's, it's, it's really about information accessibility. And um, before we go further, of course, I've got to do that disclaimer thing. This is not professional tax advice. Um, if you want that, you do have to seek it from a tax professional, a licensed certified financial planner, or a tax attorney um, to take advantage of it. This information and, and um, information that I'm going to be sharing through this uh, call is, is strictly for informational educational purposes only. So now that we got the disclaimer out the way, <laughs> let's move right. in. Let's get busy. Um, <clears throat> so over the years, um, I've learned a lot of information about, uh, and actually, you know, taking steps in my own personal finance to implement some of these um, these regulations and strategies in my own money money game. And I like to say it's a game because you really do have a playbook. You have an IRS playbook that's available to you. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, the tax laws can be very confusing, uh, and it does take a tax, 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 take a tax attorney to decipher the language. However, the simplistic um, ideas of it, you know, the ideals uh, of it is very simple. It's there to protect your money, to protect your money, um, to help it grow, and to um, help you, um, you know, create a stronger financial platform. And that's for everybody. It's not just for the wealthy. Mm -hmm. And so 4321 is really the combination. And I'll start by explaining what the four means, mm -hmm. okay? Four is about, um, it's a rule. And uh, it's about uh, taking, being able to withdraw 4% of your money, whatever that is. It's called the safe withdrawal rate, rate rule. And it's basically the rate uh, at which you can spend your money without ever running out of money, 4%. Mm -hmm. And so an easy way to calculate this, um, you just simply uh, take however much money you'll need to retire and flipping it around by multiplying it um, and multiplying your yearly expenses by 25. So, for example, however much you spend on expenses, say it's $40,000, right? Mm -hmm. So $40,000, you spend $40,000 a year on your expenses, and you'll need uh, at retirement a million dollars invested to not run out of money. So you'll take that 40000 multiply it by 25, and you got a million dollars. And that's how much you'll need. Um, invested to not run out of money, okay? Um, a lot of people, uh, you know, don't even think about retirement, much less, you know, know how to calculate it and, and determine how much they need. So it's really important uh, to really start looking at how much money you spend on expenses every year. 
if your rent is a thousand dollars a month, you spend twelve thousand dollars a month, or twelve thousand dollars a year. I'm sorry, uh, on you know just rent alone. Okay, that's twelve thousand dollars a year on rent alone. But you add in your car expenses, your insurance, your health insurance, um, all of your electrical bills, business expenses. Um, you tally all that up and come up with your number. Okay, and then multiply by twenty five. And that's how much money you'll need to have invested in order to not run out of money by the time you do get to retirement age. So um, some think that there might be a limit on how you, how long you can actually withdraw 4% and not run out of money. Um, well, the, there's a study called the Trinity Study, and it looks at how much money you need to retire for every year uh, between 1926 and 2009. Well, actually, it's been updated to 2000, 2012. So the study found that if you invest 50% of your money in stocks and 50% of your money in bonds and you withdraw 4% of your money, you'll be fine for at least 25 years. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the mortality rate, um, you know, we're living longer, uh, you know, 85, 95, some of us even 105, <laughs> you know. We're living a long time, so mm -hmm. maybe 30 years after retirement won't be long enough, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, just to be clear, you know, the 4% rule isn't 100% foolproof, uh, but the odds are pretty good that um, even if you hope to retire from a regular work, work job and you, you last longer than 30 years, then you'll know that you'll have uh, – you know, four percent of your money to to help you um, to help you survive during that time. Mm -hmm. Now, um, that's that's one rule. Learn that four percent rule and start implementing. Um, you know, some of the some of the strategies and and the um, you know calculating the dollars that you need so that you can have a good idea of where you want your money to go. Because again, this is your army, your army going out to work for you, and if you um, you know, go to a, a financial planner or I would advise a broker, you know, an investment broker to find out what's the best means of investing your money to generate that level of income. Um, it would uh, help you in getting to your goal of reaching whatever that number is for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions? <laughs> because that, that's a lot. <laughs> yes, it is. And it's, it's, um, it's it's very interesting and and you know your point about um i guess the the probably the wealthy having more access to this information or maybe just more um knowing how to protect their money i'm i'm not sure i think there's a combination of that and also not people not really being exposed to this information um mm -hmm. you know not being informed not looking for the information um mm -hmm. you know i just um just thinking back on the housing market, which I always look back at because when I first got a condo, um, and I can't remember, I think that was around 2001, a lot of it you have, you still had to put down uh, 20%. Um, there was no just take the house and not pay at that time. Mm -hmm. Put down 20%, there were certain things in place. And then about four years later, when the market became really heated, um, you could get a house, no money down. Right. Um, and there was all these shows on television about flipping and you can make all this money and blah, blah, blah. And I just kind of, at the time I was, I was looking to sell the condo. I started doing some research online and in spite mm -hmm. of what the media was saying at that time, I was reading some housing blogs and they were talking about, Things really going downhill in Florida, um, I believe in, in California. These were things I was not seeing in the mainstream media. I was just seeing mm -hmm. the puff pieces and the, and the flipping shows. And what I realized at that time was that if you don't do your research and understand what's going on, you could be in a world of trouble. Because I absolutely, saw, you know, mortgages are like the bubble or what you know, whatever. Um, things that they were selling at that time, and I did my research and said, you know, that doesn't make sense. Let me go mm -hmm. with something that I can understand what it is and not overpay, um, not try to get more house than I can afford. You know, I, I was trying to think in a certain way 
Mm -hmm. Um, But I saw, of course, when things imploded, a lot of people were left out there who believed what they saw, believed the hype, didn't Mm -hmm. research, had no money now because they got this house without money down and didn't have money because uh, by the time I sold my condo, the whole process was completely different. You didn't have yeah. 20% down. Um, all, all the rules had changed in that amount of time. But what I had also read was a lot of the investors had already gotten out of the market. The people who were in <laughs> the play before who knew what this is about and may buy properties and flip or whatever, but they understood the game, they were gone. The average they were gone. who didn't know but just saw something on TV or took a class mm-hmm. in a hotel somewhere now is, is losing their money. And I say, all right. to say, you have to be smart about these things. You must research. You cannot believe what you see on TV. You can't believe whoever that is in the, in, in the hotel um, who, you know, sends out something, come and learn about real estate. You have to be smart about your own money. You must, you must, you must. You have to do yeah. research. Do not you have to anything or believe who tells you who themselves doesn't know. We have to be responsible for ourselves at this point. In my opinion, you, there's no excuse for it now. I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly. I'm exactly. And, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, there, there are people like me, you know, good people intended to, you know, share this information. No agenda. Okay. Uh-huh. But the good people like me are telling you. Don't take my word for it. Mm-hmm. Look for yourself. Find the information for yourself. Here, I'm going to give you the resources to do that. You right. know what I mean? Right. So, yes, you, you cannot get sucked into the I'm a guru, I know all about it uh, mm-hmm. lie because that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you have to take it, take the initiative to be responsible for your own education in, in your money matters. Uh, because your money is your livelihood. Mm-hmm. And you lose your money, you lose your livelihood. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and if you're not, like you said, smart about it, you know, yeah, because now there are ways, that, that, <laughs> there are ways to do this and, and, you know, benefit. But those who are smart mm-hmm. are, like you said, they were out of the game before the housing crash, right? right? Yeah. They were already out of the game. They had made their money. They were done. Mm -hmm. But those who were still kind of just straggling along in the back end and just getting wind of, oh, yeah, let me get, you know, Mm -hmm. this sounds really good. Let me jump in. Mm -hmm. It was already too late. Yeah. And so it is really important. This is why it's really, really important. You, you, You can't just go on what someone says, you can't even believe what you read in the papers anymore. You've got to get deeper. You've got to drill deeper. Mm-hmm. You've got to look at trends. You've got to look at um, credible financial resources like the mm-hmm. Wall Street Journal or, you know, um, the uh, over-the-counter times or, you know, you've got to look into the markets for yourself to see what the trends are. And if you mm-hmm. don't know how to do that, you ask somebody who is licensed, who is uh, credible and you find out, you just find out for yourself. Um, but you start to, you know, you start, you, you initiate the money game by taking responsibility to learn about wealth creation and wealth building strategies, whichever strategy you decide to use. Real estate is just one of those areas. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's just one area and there are many hundreds of areas in which you can strategize and build your wealth and create your wealth. Mm-hmm. Um, I've often talked to you uh, on your show about the difference between financial literacy and financial capability. Mm-hmm. And we understand that financial literacy is, yeah, learning how to budget your, 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 your bank account, you know, learning how to budget your household finances. And it's really more about the immediate um, need situation. Mm-hmm. But financial capability that's a whole nother ball game because that's about really learning how to uh, make your money work for you and learning investment strategies that are available to everyone um, and protected by IRS regulation. Mm-hmm. And so this is the, this is the um, platform in which I, you know, like to make the distinction between 
I can, I don't want to teach you how you need to learn how to do your own budgeting and things. That's not my, that's not where I'm, you know, coming from. I don't want to show you how to do that. If you're, if you're not there yet and you can't balance your budget, Mm -hmm. uh, you need, yeah, you need a financial literacy class. Okay. If you're Mm -hmm. still overdrawing your, your debit, your credit cards and, or debit cards or whatever your checking account, then you need financial literacy to to help you, you know, learn how to balance and use your money efficiently. However, I'm talking about financial capability where now I've mastered the game of financial literacy. Now I want to master the game of financial capability by uh, learning strategies that will take my money and, 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 and allow my money to work for me and, mm-hmm. and do it in a way that is uh, benched against what's working or what the trends are in the market and mm-hmm. following the advice of expert financial experts that can show me how to do that effectively. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Another thing I wanted to say is, you know, I've been doing a series of videos on Periscope weekly uh, at 1130 AM Central Standard Time on Tuesday, and it's called Let's Talk Legacy Tuesdays. And um, so I'm talking about the seven principles, the seven prosperity principles that are outlined in George S. Clayson's book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Mm-hmm. And this was really one of the first books that I read um, about wealth building. And um, they, they're pay yourself first, create a spending plan, make your money multiply, avoid get rich quick schemes, which is one of those things we talked about with the real estate, own your own home, ensure your future and increase your ability to earn income. So those seven principles, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going through uh, every week one principle, reviewing the previous principles and uh, helping people to understand that you, there are certain things you got to put in place mm-hmm. in order to, to build your wealth. Um, but getting back to today's topic, the 4321, is really just helping you to understand some of the foundation pieces that are necessary to begin the wealth building process. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, no, uh, if anybody's asking, is she a millionaire? No, no, I'm not a millionaire. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just put it out there. It, it ain't happened yet. However, when I retire, <laughs> I will be well over <laughs> a millionaire, okay? <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so, yes, yes. Okay, see, so, so this, this is why it's important to start looking at this now. No, you may not be in that position at this moment. However, if you if you strategically place your chess pieces on the board, you cannot be checkmate by life. In other words, you will have an opportunity to experience exactly what you've been trying to work for for the last 40 years, you know, 30 years, whatever, 20 years, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, by the time you get to retirement age, there are ways that you can accelerate that process. I heard Tony Robbins talk about a gentleman who was making $14,000 a year. $14,000 a year was all he was making working uh, in the, um, the warehouse for Walmart. Mm-hmm. He ended up uh, uh, retiring. He, he, he claimed, you know, he's like, I can't, I, I can't save any money. I don't have any money to put away and blah, blah, blah. And he just went on and on. Well, this gentleman who introduced him to the idea of financial capability taught him the principles of putting his money away and, and leveraging compounding. Okay, mm-hmm. showed him different strategies that he could diversify his portfolio and grow it over time. When that man retired, he had $77 million mm-hmm. off of a $14,000 a year, $14,000 a year income. Mm-hmm. He retired with $77 million. Wow. Now, that does not happen because you put it in a bank. Yes. Or because, you know what I'm saying? The mm-hmm. bank is not going to pay. You're not going to make enough right. putting it in a bank. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you've got to implement strategies that will allow your money to work over time for you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now he made the sacrifice by doing what the first principle calls for in the seven, you know, seven prosperity principles. He paid himself first. So he made a commitment to take 10% of his $14,000 and put it into his financial future Mm -hmm. and not touch it. Be disciplined and patient because during that time, 
granted, the markets went up, they went down, they went up, they went down. But with good, solid financial uh, advice and financial experts leading him and guiding him in the way, during, along the way, he was able to see a, in, in a steady increase in his return on his investment. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's about. That's how you, that's how you build wealth. So he's, he's retired. He's living a life of his dreams. And that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's not about the moment. I mean, you know, I I hear people say, you know, getting into the grind. I'm in this grind and I got to grind. And oh, Jesus, it just wears me out thinking about, um, I'm sorry. It just does. Just wears me out every time I hear it. Stop grinding, okay? Get wise, get smart. Oh my god! Yeah, I, yeah. That's, uh, I mean, really, okay. Get smart. Get smart about your money, and um, mm-hmm. and 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 learn some of these things that that you know are out there for you. Go research. Do your research on the four percent rule. Learn what it what it will take for you to get to the money that you need to retire safely and withdraw without ever running out. That's just one of the formulas. Law Depot is a leading publisher of do-it-yourself legal documents. They offer state-specific business documents that can be completed within minutes. Visit WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com for your exclusive 5% discount off all documents. Simply click on Legal Forms in the top menu to get the selection of documents for the busy entrepreneur. Don't see the document you want listed? No problem. Just click on any link and it'll take you to the Law Depot site and you can see the entire selection. Forms include estate planning, business forms, family, financial, and real estate. There's a lot there on the site. And when you go to the WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com link, you'll receive your 5% discount. That's Law Depot, the leading publisher of do-it-yourself legal documents. Right. So uh, that we're going to go down to number three. Three. Mm-hmm. There are three types of income, three types of income that is taxed, okay? And please pay attention. This is very, very, very important. There are three types of income that is taxed. All right. Now, we all want to know what's taxed. At least I do. <laughs> so there's earned income, salaries, wages, right? Then there's passive income, passive income like rents or leases. Um, then there's some portfolio income, and this is like interest and dividends. So anytime your portfolio is um, uh, earning interest or dividends, that's taxable income. All right? Um and this is, you know, basically your portfolio is, you know, what's built up from an investment strategy. And um, if you utilize the seven prosperity principles in, you know, that I mentioned in the richest man in Babylon, um, then you'll you'll know that these interest and dividends are going to, you know, be taxable income. Mm-hmm. So all of these types of income are taxed. All right. But they have favorable what they call favorable tax treatment. Right. Mm-hmm. So. When you understand what favorable tax treatment is, favorable tra- tax treatment is, means that the IRS has created some, created some kind of law or regulation that will lend you favor or give you some type of tax credit on the taxable income, mm-hmm. all right? Mm-hmm. So now you, you've got taxable income, but it's a possibility you can get favorable tax treatment from the IRS. Right, but your tax professional people will tell you this. <laughs> they should if they don't. They should tell you this. And if they don't tell you this, then you need to hire somebody else. But you need to, um, you know, understand that there, there are only three types of income that are taxed. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, however, there is a tax instrument, and I do say tax instrument, that you could put your money into that that is not deemed any of these three income types and your money can grow tax free, be access tax free and be distributed tax free upon your death. Mm -hmm. So you don't, your, your loved ones don't get taxed that awful estate tax that they have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, With this particular instrument. Now, let me emphasize that this is not 
considered tax evasion. Okay? Mm -hmm. The IRS created these regulations to protect you only if you follow their guidelines. All right? Mm -hmm. So now that we understand what the three types of tax regulations are, I'm going to share with you the three tax regulations that protect your money. Okay? So now you got three types of tax or three types of income that is taxed, but you also have three tax regulations that protect your money. Mm -hmm. But only through this tax free instrument that I've shared. And it's a, it's called a what is what is called a max funded life insurance contract. Most people have never even heard of it. And, and like I mentioned uh, um, before in your, uh, in, in our last conversation, I talked about the, you know, distinction between whole life policies and term life policies. Most people have heard of term life policies. Mm -hmm. Well, term life policies are okay, you know, for immediate kind of, you know, need situations, but I don't recommend as a licensed insurance agent that um, anyone gets term life uh, policy that is not looking beyond, um, you know, their or into their retirement years. I just don't recommend it. Now, there are some people after the age of 62, you become what they call uninsurable uh, and rates go increasingly high. And there's some easy term plans that you can get that are term life that you might need in case you don't have life protection. However, when we're talking about a wealth creation strategy and you have time on your side, um, if you're in your 30s, 40s, even younger, you should start looking at whole life policies where there is a cash buildup, um, a, a cash reserve buildup uh, over time. Mm -hmm. Now, it does take discipline. It takes keeping that policy active. And for most people, they don't even see life insurance as a financial priority. Okay. And that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate because um, the bottom line is, you know, death can come at any moment, any moment. Okay. And if you're not prepared for it uh, by, you know, having the protection in place, it's, it's, it, it's too late and then it's devastating financially to the family, right? Mm -hmm. So, Leaving those considerations in mind, keeping those considerations in mind, you'll want to uh, understand, though, that there is a upside benefit to having a whole life policy in place, and, and especially with this max funded um, policy that I'm going to be talking about that the IRS protects. Now, there are three IRS regulations, and I do want people to do their research. Please <laughs> do your research. Section 72E is called TEFRA, T-E-F-R-A, and it is the Tax Equity Fiscal Responsibility Act of 1982. This allows people to accumulate cash-free reserves, tax-free reserves in their life insurance policy. So in other words, I can get a whole life policy that's max funded policy and build cash reserves in it tax-free. The IRS can't touch it. They can't touch it. They can't tax me on it. I can access that cash and not be taxed on it. Okay? This is mm -hmm. awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right? That's the first one. Now, there's Section 7702, which is DEFRA, D-E-F-R-A. DEFRA is called, is, uh, stands for Deficit Reduction Act of 1984. This allows me to access my money in my cash reserve buildup in my life contract, my life insurance contract, tax free. So if I need the money and I need to borrow the money, I'm borrowing it from myself. First of all, I don't have to pay a bank. I don't have to pay interest fees on the bank or any of that. This is my money. This is on my life. And this is what the IRS will protect. Okay. Then there's section 101A, Tamra. T A M R A. I swear, I thought they, you know, they, they named these, these laws after women. <laughs> okay. Tefra, Defra, and Tamra. Okay. The three sisters. But, uh, Tamra is the Technical and Miscellaneous Revenue Act. And that means that upon death, that the money on your life insurance policy transfers to 
your beneficiaries tax-free. They are not subject to the inheritance uh, tax, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So here are these three regulations that allow me to accumulate my money tax-free, access my money tax-free, and transfer the money to my beneficiaries upon my desk tax-free. Right? Mm -hmm. This is gold. And I'm going to tell you why I think it's gold. When I first learned of this, I immediately thought, why isn't anybody talking about this? Mm -hmm. This is like the ultimate protection over your life and your livelihood. All right? Because with the insurance company, now you do have to make sure your insurance company is reputable, been around a long time, and never missed a dividend payment. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, that's something that you have to make sure of. However, you got a solid, if you've got a solid insurance company and policy with a max funded policy intact for your life, here's what can happen. Say you have a half a million dollar policy on your life. All right. Mm -hmm. And I'm just throwing numbers out there. This is just for example purposes only. You got a half a million dollar policy on your life and it's building up your cash value. So your cash value, say, every year grows because after the first year, it grows because the insurance company is paying dividends to you. They're paying you to keep your money. The average rate right now that the insurance companies are paying the average rate is 6%. That's the average rate, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. If you take the average rate of what the, the insurance company are paying, paying in terms of dividends on their policies versus the typical, what, CD, which might pay you 1% or 0.01%, yeah. um, you're talking about a significant profit increase. Right? Mm -hmm. But every year your money is growing at that 6% rate. So not only is your money growing at that 6% rate, but you have an opportunity to buy more insurance with that, or you have an opportunity to take a loan against that, but mm -hmm. it's a loan against yourself, so you're not paying the interest. And if you decide, which you should, uh, to pay the money back <laughs> to yourself, uh, you know, and that's just to keep your money growing. You know what I mean? It's not to, uh, it's not because you're going to go into default or anything like that because it's not like they're never going to collect if the policy, uh, is paid. Um, they're going to collect when you die. Okay. I know that sounds kind of harsh, but when you die, they just take their money off the top and then give the rest to your, to your beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. But think about it for a moment. If you had an opportunity to get a $500,000 policy on your life, and within three years, say you wanted to take a loan for $100,000 mm -hmm. to finance your business, to maybe go on a dream vacation, maybe to buy another home, maybe to invest in real estate, maybe invest in more stocks, maybe to do something else that would add, you know, add value to your bottom line, that would appreciate your money over time. If you could do that, what would that do to your life? How would that change your life? How would that change your business? You understand? So you're not going through banks. You're not being denied because of credit. You're not, this is your money. You, they can't say no. <laughs> okay? <laughs> there is no no with the, with the whole life max funded policy. There is no no. When I found that out, I was like, I'm in. <laughs> Just tell me in. I'm, that's it. I'm done. Okay? So, so this is why, this is how you create your own personal banking system. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is why I said, you know what, this is strategies I need to share. I need to show people how to develop this and how to really walk through this process of creating their own personal banking system. So I created the my personal banking system just for that reason mm -hmm. and just for that purpose to help people understand this is your wealth legacy we're talking about. Your legacy is comprised of all areas of your life. It's how you live. It's how you share with other people. It's how you give back into the world. But it's about building something that you can leave behind for your family. Mm -hmm. And rather than dying with no policy on your life and your family being stuck with all the debt and the burden of the financial responsibility of taking care of things, why not create a legacy of wealth for them because this is what the wealthy do this is how they do it and this is how they pass on generational wealth 
Right. Okay. If I could leave my son, you know, a $500,000 bank account when I'm gone, Mm -hmm. all right, that's Mm -hmm. tax free to him, how would that change his life and how he lives and makes decisions about his family? And, and things that he does, you see. Mm-hmm. So this is how we have to, we must get into that um, area of thinking about our future. Well, yeah, I but, think, yeah, I, I think it's important for people to change their, um, their mindset um, in terms of the, um, um, I don't know, working people is, is too generic, but in terms of how people who are out there um, grinding, <laughs> it's here to say. <laughs> the oh, mindset, that word. Yeah, the, the mindset is not what you've been describing at all. Mm-hmm. It's kind of in the moment of this job and what can I buy when I get out of here? And when we, the last show we had was run holidays. How many presents can I mm-hmm. get? Um, and just and just not really looking at how to build something, but I think in, in some people's cases, some of whom I've worked with in the past, mm-hmm. it's more how can I hold on to this job for as long as I can? And then when right. the job goes away, then you're all upset and angry and pissed off, but you did absolutely nothing to plan for your future. You did nothing but put all your eggs in that job basket. And then when it was That's away, right. you had, you didn't even have a resume written. <laughs> or, or plan. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. so, um, not to sound unnecessarily harsh, but I'm going to be harsh today. I'm going to tell you what I think because what I have been through in the past, what I mm-hmm. feel people better wake up to coming forward. Um, you have no excuse not to be smart about your money, smart about your professional life in terms of income, your family for sure. Um, mm-hmm. you have a responsibility and it's time to step into big. it. <laughs> yeah, big time. I agree. No, no, we can't, we can't take this lightly no. and we've got to get smart about what is available to us. You know, what is available in terms of information and knowledge yes. and take advantage of that and just not be so damn gullible when, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. with, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you you've got to not be gullible when it comes to your money, okay? And how it goes. I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. I'm I'm just tired of seeing I'm just tired of seeing uh, people victimized because you know, and and I can't even say that they've been victimized. I just have to say it's just not enough responsibility on your part for stepping up into questioning and challenging the information that's being put out there. You've got to do that. Exactly. You, you've got to do that. Okay. Um, I want to get into, I got two more things. So two key taxes. Of course, we know that there's tax deferred and tax free. You always want what's tax free. And I'm going to tell you, tax deferred is okay, but tax deferred is government created. In other words, the government has control over these plans that you are putting your money into. So if the rules change, guess what? Your money changes. Like 401ks and IRAs. These are tax deferred plans, but if the rules change, guess what? Mm-hmm. Your money changes. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about the 2008 crisis. When people lost their 401ks, there was not a, there was nothing they could do mm-hmm. to get that money back because once the government set those rules, guess what? It affects you mm-hmm. and you don't have control over that. Right. If you put your money into their, plan into that government control plan the government has control of that money even though it's your money mm-hmm. all right so be aware of that and this they tax you now it's tax deferred meaning that yeah they're just putting off the tax for later but guess what the tax rate could increase later yeah. so that means you pay a bigger tax burden on the money that you make so the more money you make the more money that's taxed yes all right. So you got to keep these things in mind. Mm-hmm. Tax deferred means put off, just put off. It doesn't mean you never have to pay taxes. It means when you access that money, you will pay a tax. Mm-hmm. Whatever that current tax rate is, that's the rate you're going to pay. Right. All right. Mm-hmm. So that is not a good strategy if you're thinking about using it for retirement. All right. 
um, tax free is always a better plan. So these are taxes. Taxes are never imposed on your income or savings. Never. Tax free means just that. It's not during growth. It's not during access and it's not during the transfer. Mm. So make sure it's a tax free instrument like the max funded policies that I talked about earlier. Okay. Well, and that brings, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, I'm just that gonna, brings me mm -hmm, to the one it. instrument, mm -hmm. that one instrument, that whole life or max funded policy is the one instrument that will allow you under those three uh, IRS regulations that I mentioned earlier, um, uh, uh, Tefra, Defra, and Tamra. <laughs> I just love that. I love saying that because it sounds like three sisters, okay? Yeah. But, <laughs> but those three ladies will protect your money from tax, from taxes, being taxed. And the only way that it will do so is under those policy types, mm. right? But you have to know how to set it up properly so that you don't um, risk paying money um, to the IRS because you didn't follow the rules. Now, here's the thing. I told you, IRS, we have a playbook. Everyone gets the same playbook. Whether you're low income or the 1%, you all get the same IRS playbook. Right? So play by the rules, people. <laughs> then that way you won't be crying the blues if something, you know, comes up and you have to pay more in taxes. You got to play by the rules. Yeah. Simple I, as that. I agree. And this is how you win. You, you, this is how you win with money. This is how you win the game. But it also takes expert, uh, consult. You know, it takes the advisors who are credible in this area of financial wealth creation. Mm -hmm. And again, it's very different from financial literacy. So, you know, you have to be prepared to pay a consultation fee or pay a percentage of whatever it is you're going to invest mm -hmm. um, to that expert to lead you down that path. Because even with them paying and giving you the, the information, all the information, there are no guarantees. The market can do backflips in a second. Right. And you've got to, but you've got to be patient enough to roll with it. Because over time, the markets continue to rise. There are going to be dips. There are going to be, you know, valleys. Right. But it always goes back in an inclined position. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, you, you know, if you keep that in mind, you, you will be, you'll be fine. You'll be safe. Discipline and patience are the two characteristics that must be honed in the wealth creation process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and, you know, people really have to become more knowledgeable, you know, as we were saying before about your money and, and what you're doing and the choices that you're making. Um, that goes for people who are employees or people who have a business. Uh, it's, it's the same thing. You really have to be smarter um, because I, Remember again back in corporate and um, um, at Lucent, as a matter of fact, because yeah, I'm going to mention their name. Um, they had spun off from AT and T, and some people had gotten some kind of money because they were, mm -hmm. like, you know, part of the employees at that split. And um, I came after I moved over after um, from AT and T, not directly, but I took another position somewhere else and came there. And then they mm -hmm. had options where you could invest, you know, the 401k. And then they had things that you could put things into the, um, the stocks for Lucent, um, that were kind of set up differently because you're an employee. Mm -hmm. And I talked to my cousin who is in, um, the financial sector and she told me never put all of your money in one place. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You wouldn't believe how many people, how many employees because Lucent has been doing well at a certain point put mm -hmm. all of their investment in that one place. Yep. And then when the inevitable happened <laughs> later, um, <laughs> yeah. then some of the management, and I'm going to say because I heard my own ears, were telling people not to take their money out. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's not rare. Um, it's happened in the past. I won't mention yeah. big names, but it's happened. Yep. Um, but yep. that's 
it that really struck home to me. You know, if I keep saying I had these experiences and I go, oh, now I'm, it's all clicking into place whereby mm -hmm. maybe I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't been in these situations and seen and experienced it. I may not have been one of these people, like you're saying, is doesn't mm -hmm. really know what you don't know. But seeing, That's right. seeing talking to other employees who were panicked <laughs> when they saw their money go down like a penny, because they didn't take it out because they trusted or because they believed because they didn't have to do the research and maybe they didn't have a, part, a professional. So my cousin wasn't right. as professional to me at that time. She was giving me some advice. They didn't have that knowledge to know, hmm, maybe this is, maybe I need to look at the long term and not just in this moment that this stock is doing great. I need to look at performance. I need to research where my money is going. And That's now, right trust that this manager who's not even a financial person telling me to keep my money in there because he was told to tell me that maybe I need to think a little bit about this. You know, as soon as they said that to me, I went and moved the rest of my money out of it. <laughs> like, exactly. It. Yeah. <laughs> Something's about to happen. But you know, again, those, those are the signals. Those are things that you need to pay attention to yes. because it, I mean, you know, I mean, that's like a big red flag yes. that the company needs your money. If they're telling you to keep it in there, yes. they need the money to stay, you know, afloat or liquid or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so they're leveraging that money mm -hmm. for whatever their own purpose is. Mm -hmm. It's your money, but it's in their accounts. You understand they're, they are, they are tasked with the responsibility of managing those accounts. Mm -hmm. And so it is very important to, again, take initiative with your money. Don't ever let somebody tell you to keep your money in a um, in an account that you are clear that something is going on. It's time to move it. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're, like I said, we're at a precipice in our economy right now where mm -hmm. things are going to shift drastically in terms of the wealth transfer. Yeah. And here is where it is time for people who are middle class Americans, I'm not mm -hmm. talking about, you know, um, you know, those that are living in the poverty level because they are struggling enough as it is. Mm -hmm. However, those that are in the middle class America, um, uh, category have an opportunity have an opportunity to establish real wealth based on the signals that are happening right now in our um political climate yeah so you got to pay attention got to you just got to pay attention to those things exactly. and uh you know find resources on i've got several that i you know uh use on in terms of getting news and updates about what's happening with different markets um, right. and what's going on with different things in the economy that, uh, you know, could possibly enhance my portfolio. And, um, yeah, the thing is also um, something else that I, you know, learned in, in one of my many jobs. <laughs> when I was in the retail sector, um, what they told us is keep, you should be like reading a lot of different magazines and, and seeing what's mm -hmm. going on. And, um, you know, this may seem out of left field, but when I was in the fashion industry, they said to do, mm -hmm. they encouraged you to do that. Why? Because trends going on in the culture, trends going on internationally affect fashion. Mm -hmm. It affects the styles. It affects the spending. It, it affects everything. The color. It affects mm -hmm. everything. So those people, they, the the people in the industry, have companies that track trends that they go to mm -hmm. them that are telling them what color they think is going to be popular two years from now. What style right. is popular? They don't think it, they're not just sitting at a board drawing some inspiration. They this is a, mm -hmm. like a science almost. This is something where the money people are saying. They want their investment. It's not about you just being mm -hmm. oh, just going to throw a design down there and see what happens. There's a business right. here and a mentality that they tell you, look around you, see what's happening in different places, not just in one, in your town, your city, your company, but look beyond mm -hmm. that. Consume different Well, media. you know, see what's happening in general, and that's going to give you a taste of what is coming down the pike. Absolutely. Um, here's the thing. About five years ago, 
I noticed in, in Texas, they started putting in what they call smart meters. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, it was probably more than five years ago, maybe six years ago. Um, they were putting in smart meters for electricity. Mm-hmm. And just, just being in that tech space most of the time, I thought, hmm, something's going on with technology that's causing a shift with the electric companies. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, over time, I started noticing that things, things became smarter. Mm -hmm. Uh, not just the, not just the meters. Now they were installing thermostats that were smaller. Now things were communicating. So then, you know, there's this language on the internet called the internet of things. And so there's this slow transitioning happening. It's happening, even though people are, you know, kind of blindly, you know, just kind of unaware of it. It's yeah. subtle. Um, but this is what they call the internet of things. Mm-hmm. So I started looking at technology stocks that were at the leading edge of this trend. Mm-hmm. And and started diversifying my portfolio into some of those um, uh, some of those stocks that are developers of this trend because as the market continues to uh, gravitate towards more smart things, mm-hmm. my portfolio gets fatter and fatter. <laughs> I remember somebody somebody told me a long time ago. Uh, and, and he worked at, at the firm that I worked, uh, at, and he, he was kind of a mentor, but more just somebody just planting seeds in me every now and then. He said, Kim, he said, if you pay attention to the trends, you will never, ever be broke. And I, and I, yeah, he, t- and, and I, and I said, wow, I, I didn't understand it at the time. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, trends. I'm thinking fashion (laughs) trends. Okay, yeah, fashion trends, you know, but, but, but he was more talking about the market trends. Yeah. He was talking about the, the, the underlying, uh, growth of our economical base, our country, our progression. He was talking about that. And when I understood it, I was like, wow, okay, I get it now. I get it now because now my little radar goes up when things, little things, mm-hmm. you know, come into, come into the forefront for me. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I started noticing, you know, this internet of things language. I start, started noticing that companies are using what they call big data. Yes. Um, yes. These are the kind of things that most people just kind of overlook. They don't understand it and they think it's just some high tech, but this is all very serious language and lingo that's being used as kind of a code for the transition that's happening exactly exactly and this is this is where we could take advantage now this is where i you know i you know i believe that we could really take advantage in terms of generating uh that solid uh base foundational um base for building wealth Right. In, in right. terms of getting involved in some of these stocks and understanding right. what they represent. Yeah. And you really don't, it's not like you have to be a scientist or a researcher. Or Absolutely. A person. Mm-mm. It's just pay attention to what's going on around you. I mean, when I was working at yeah. Johnson, Johnson uh, near here, they have the IT uh, uh, building and they replaced like in the parking lot, they put these solar panels that are like, um, mm. not like a, like a, uh, it's not like a whole roof, but the solar panel covers like where you park your car. So you kind of cover it mm-hmm. from the And then they had a charging station for electric cars. And mm-hmm. I, you know, then I just read something about a, a town in France where they're putting solar panels into the street, into the actual street where the cars go on. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there, there's all these things happening um, yep. all over the place. Don't just look at, well, let's go back to the olden days. That's done. Right. <laughs> I'm just letting you know, in case you haven't figured it out, they're not rolling back to Mayberry. Have you read that mm-hmm. article? We're not going back. <laughs> okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> look ahead to where where is technology going because it's changing by the minute. Where is it going? It is. Money. Where, where is it going? Right. Where can you be so that you can meet this and be ahead of the game? Because now's the time for you to open your eyes and look around 
and see what's happening. And you just notice things going around you, maybe right in your mm-hmm. town, in your city, in your state. Pick up, you know, different newspapers. You can even get this I these information just online or from a magazine. Mm-hmm. Even, curious magazine, or I don't want to read that. You can get this from any place that you see new things happening. Pay attention mm-hmm. to them. And one other quick thing you I know, wanted to throw in there was the last um, recession that we had. Mm-hmm. I remember mm-hmm. about how like companies like Mary Kay, I think Mary Kay made like $8 billion during that time. Yes. Because it's something they call the lipstick indicator. Um, yes. That certain things never lose money. <laughs> no matter what. Okay. I, I don't care if the phone bill hasn't been paid. I, if I need a, a tube of lipstick, I'm going to the drugstore and get me some <laughs> lipstick, right? <laughs> Because if I don't, <laughs> if I don't feel good, I'm at least look good. Okay, so you're right. That's what I'm talking about, and I was really surprised because I hadn't even thought about that. You know, I wasn't in the beauty mm-hmm. field, you know, fashion, and fashion does take its hits. But I was like, really? But I said, of course, because it's certain industry, certain products, certain things that people mm-hmm. only buy. And it doesn't matter. So that's also something else. Right. You know, if you're an entrepreneur, there's some ways you can look at right. that. Right. Hmm. These are things that are going to survive through the ups and downs because people are always going to want this no matter what. Let me look into this, maybe investment or offer, offering. You know, you really got to think a little bit um, about where you can be so you can protect your interests, your financial interests, your professional interests. Okay, here is a great tip. Okay, on on that note, uh, here's a great tip. Mm-hmm. If you're looking to invest your money into a stock or, you know, make an investment into the stock market and, um, you know, you want to do well, own what you buy. Mm. Own what you buy. If you are a Starbucks lover and you are in Starbucks every freaking day, and you're buying that vente for five bucks, six bucks, whatever it costs. I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Every single day, and you don't own Starbucks stock. Shame on you. <laughs> How about that? Shame on you. Okay. That's true. Because if you tally that money up that you spend on Starbucks coffee every week, and you multiply that by fifty-two, that's how much a year you're spending on Starbucks coffee. Think about. How much that money would be working for you if you were invested in Starbucks stock <laughs> and being paid quarterly dividends by Starbucks? Right. You're right. <laughs> so, <a> if <laughs> own what you buy, own it. That's so, <laughs> so true. So true. If you like Nike, you go p- spend two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars pair for you know Nike shoes. Own some Nike stock. <laughs> if you're in Walmart every week and you got to go to Walmart, I don't care how much you spend. If it's a dollar or a hundred dollars and you don't own Walmart stock, stock buy Walmart stock. Right. Okay. Right. Um, whatever it is. Right. I, I happen to own a lot of tech stocks because I, I use a lot of technology. Mm-hmm. Right. But you know what? I love it because I'm like, mm, technology is not going anywhere. Right. And and things are looking good for most of the stocks that I have. <laughs> you know? so, like, so I'm happy. I'm a happy camper. But but the point is, own what you buy. Exactly. Be an owner in that. Right. Because it, you, otherwise you're just giving them money instead of them paying you for being a part owner, owning a part of that company. Right. That's an excellent point. Excellent. Okay. Because, yeah, yeah, because you don't think about it, but it adds up. It adds up. And then where is that money? Oh, yeah. How can it benefit you even more than than it is right now? You know, just you're spending money on the coffee, but you could be getting even something more out of it if if you stop. Essentially, when you buy, after you buy the stock, when you buy coffee, you're just putting the money back in your own pocket. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) (laughs) That's what it boils down to. (laughs) I like that idea much better. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So every time you buy that cup of coffee, 
<laughs> it's okay because now it's just money going back into your pocket. Because when the when the company does well and the profit margins are really good, yeah. guess what they do? They pay dividends to the stock owners. Exactly. Okay. So that's money back in your pocket. Right. You got to look at it this way. I mean, we really have to start looking at our money in a different way. We have to start seeing it as our army going out to serve and protect us against poverty, mm -hmm. against lack, mm -hmm. against want. Because if we have it out there working for us, it's bringing us back more than we put out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a perfect way to describe it. Can you please let everybody know where they can find you? Absolutely. You can go, of course, on my Facebook fan page, Create Wealth Legacy. That's facebook.com forward slash Create Wealth Legacy. Uh, also, um, be sure to sign up. There's a free download called How to Easily Create Your Wealth Legacy and Live a Remarkable Life. And I'm also on Instagram. And uh, that's Kim underscore the legacy creator. So you can follow me on Instagram or you can follow me on Twitter at MSK Harris. And um, you'll also get information on my tweets, you know, as I'm tweeting through the week and Periscope updates and things like that. So looking forward to connecting with folks. And again, if you want to uh, get a free consult from me, just go to Kim Harris dot you can book dot me. To book your free consultation, I'd be happy to talk to you about the My Personal Banking System and how to get you started in creating your own personal banking system with the uh, max funded policies that I discussed in this call, uh, this session and uh, help you to um, use those tax regulations, Tamara Deferin, <laughs> the three sisters. <laughs> Help you utilize the three sisters, Tefra, Defra, and Tamra, so that they can help you save money yeah. and be tax free. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, that is, yeah, those, those names are funny, but they they do help you to kind of remember <laughs> what, what 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 they are. So I okay, think, yeah, yeah, that's, that's an interesting combination there, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we, well, you know, obviously we, this is a topic we could talk about for hours because, um, mm -hmm. so much, um, involved in it and, and, um, it's so important that people are awake and aware of how to manage their money and invest their money and look at, just change the mindset around it. Um, I think that the middle class really needs an overhaul in how they look at their money and, and you're saying about the legacy and, and, um, know what they're leaving what they're spending it's it's a it's really a major overall has to happen because if not um you know a lot of people are going to lose a lot at this point um because they're not going to be ready for these shifts and these changes and they're, they're just not going to be in a position to take advantage of the opportunities that will be there as you're saying um do the things that are, that are um definitely coming down the pike so I hope anybody listening is really going to take this very seriously. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, right. It's not a joke. It really is not. So please, please do take this to heart. Listen as many times as you have to, to take it in or start your research. If you haven't already done that and, um, you know, really look at what moves you can make to help yourself right now and not wait for someone else to tell you to do it later. Um, it's not, uh, not, not going to work. Um, so, <laughs> uh, we probably should wrap up now before we hear until, uh, another couple of hours. <laughs> because we, probably, we probably could do that, I think, and, and still, you know, not even repeat anything that's been said. So, um, um, do you have any, I guess, some, any final thoughts that you want to share with us? No, just a reminder to own what you buy first. And make sure that um, you learn the difference between financial literacy and financial capability. Mm -hmm. And being financial capable means that you've created a legacy that you can leave, okay, that um, will last generations to come. Mm -hmm. So become financial capable and um, and live a good life. You can live a remarkable life if you understand how to utilize the playbook. And um, the playbook is the IRS regulations. They're there for everybody, and we all have access to it. But we don't always know how to go about moving in the direction 
that um, will help us to achieve our financial goals. And believe me, the grind is maybe one way that you choose to do it, but not me. (laughs) I choose not to grind, okay? (laughs) So if you're looking for alternatives to the grind, I suggest you become financially capable. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good way to look at it, right? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> yes. <laughs> out of that and, you know, forget about the get rich quick, whatever it is you may be looking at right now and look at something that you can do and, and really see some result from. And, you know, I'll just yeah. throw out there that the IRS.gov uh, website, at least it has been up to this point, has lots of detailed information, tons of detailed information. So, you yep. are, um you know, intimidated by that, it is actually very readable. You know, it's not something you have to have any kind of advanced degrees to figure out. It's it's written in a way that, that you can understand it, and there's tons of paperwork. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I've called, people have been very responsive and explained things. So um, please take it upon yourself to take advantage of these things that are there for you. Um, well, thank you so much, um, Kim, for joining me once again. I'm sure that, um, you know, we'll, we're going to do this again as we get more into the year, because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of things to talk about regarding money, investments, you know, and finances. So there's always going to be some topics that need to be addressed. So um, I want to thank you so much for joining me again. And, you know, just definitely uh, I'll be looking out to, to have you come back to the show. It's my pleasure. Okay, everyone, I know you have enjoyed this. <laughs> There's a lot that we discussed, a lot that uh, we covered. As I said, don't be afraid to listen again and again. Um, share it with your friends. Uh, um, really connect with Kim on, on social media or, or, or uh, schedule a time with her and, and um, you know, get more information so that you can also be prepared and, and get your, your finances in order and really be in a position, a much better position that you may have believed that you could be in. It is possible. So just please take advantage of all the things um, that are there for you. And, and, and please definitely take advantage of the information that was shared with you today and share this with your friends as well. So once again, it's from Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. I'm so glad you could join me. And we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. You can also join in the conversation on Facebook.com slash Women Entrepreneurs and on the website, WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com. And don't forget to listen in on DVCoach.Podomatic.com and on iTunes.